Autophagia is the practice of biting or consuming your own body. It's not classified as mental illness, mainly because everyone does it to some extent, biting nails, chewing dead skin from the fingers, and even eating bogeys, uh, or technically autophagia. And in the vast majority of people, they do no harm. However, in extreme cases, autophagia can tip into self-injurious behavior. We're not just talking about biting a nail a little too short here. People have gnawed their fingers to the bone, filled their stomachs with indigestible body matter, and even cut chunks of flesh from their own legs. The consequences for patients include embarrassment, disfigurement, surgical intervention, and even death. Now, autophagia is an incredibly broad condition, but it can be broken down into five main subgroups. Oncophagia, which is the biting of fingernails and toenails. Dermatophagia, which is chewing the skin. Trichophagia, which is pulling and eating the hair. Self-vampirism, which is drinking your own blood. And self-cannibalism, which is the practice of consuming your own flesh. We'll start with the most common, onychophagia, or nail biting. Approximately 20% of adults and 25-30% to of children admit to regularly chewing on their nails. That is billions of people. Fortunately, as demonstrated by the lack of nail biting related deaths hitting the headlines, onychophagia is a fairly safe habit. But that doesn't mean it's harmless. The biggest risk is that your fingers are an absolute breeding ground for germs, and putting them into your mouth transfers bacteria like Salmonella and E. coli. One study conducted by a Turkish university found that 76% of nail biters had E. coli in their saliva, compared to just 26.5% of non biters. Other common risks of chewing are halitosis, facial herpes, ingrown nails, infections, and permanent damage to the nail bed, meaning that they'll never grow back the same. Habitual biters can also move their teeth out of place, chip or cause the enamel to splinter. For patients, these can lead to embarrassment, social isolation, and stress. For example, one 54-year-old woman came forward in 2017 admitting that her habit was ruining her life. Her fingers had been permanently disfigured and her bottom teeth were caving in due to the constant pressure. Other patients have had to have their fingertips amputated due to biting-induced infections. By far, though, the most horrifying effect of nail biting is bezoars. These are rock-solid balls of foreign materials that collect in the stomach. Once large enough, they can cause nausea, vomiting, infection, and even death. Unfortunately, surgery is the only way to remove them. This was the case for one South African patient in 1954 who managed to consume so many of their own nails that they formed a massive, life-threatening bezoar. Another common body part for consumption is the skin, otherwise known as dermatophagia. Generally, this involves biting off the hard bits around the fingernails, but it can extend to the skin around the joints and the mouth. This usually results in bleeding and small wounds, but in the long term, the skin can become callous, discolored, or infected. Fortunately, as skin is easily digestible, this habit won't develop into bezoars, but it can still kill you. This is what happened to John Gardner, a 40-year-old man from the UK. His biting habit was extreme, and his fingers were often bleeding. Then a few days after his 40th birthday, one of them became infected. It quickly went septic, and he was rushed to the hospital, where he received intravenous antibiotics and the amputation of his fingertip. Tragically, though, despite initial improvement, the infection was too severe, and he suffered a sudden and fatal heart attack. And terrifyingly, this wasn't a freak one-off occurrence, and others have also died or come close to it as a result of chewing their fingers. For example, in 2017, history almost repeated itself when 28-year-old Luke Hanneman bit the skin down the side of his nail and, like John, developed sepsis. Fortunately, after a four-day hospital stay and IV antibiotics, he pulled through. And then there's trichophagia, which is a much less common form of autophagia, affecting just 0.05 to 0.4% of the population is the pulling and eating of hair. Sometimes sufferers will just eat the root bulb at the end of the hair. In other cases, they'll consume the entire strand. For those just eating the root, it's easily digested, so it won't cause any gastro issues. But if they pull enough, they'll be left with bald spots and patchy hair. The trichophagia symptoms in those who somehow manage to swallow the whole hair are usually much worse. It could even be fatal. Just like nails make bezoars, hair is indigestible and can form trichobezoars, otherwise known as hairballs. Unlike those spongy mass you might be picturing, these are rock-hard, stomach-shaped lumps of hair glued together with mucus. They can be the size of a football and weigh up to 10 pounds. These block up the stomach, causing nausea, vomiting, and weight loss. In some cases, a long tail of hair can pass into the intestines while the main mass remains in the stomach. This is called a Rapunzel syndrome after the princess's signature locks. In the case of one 38-year-old woman, her Rapunzel syndrome resulted in severe malnutrition as the hair was blocking the part of the intestine that absorbs protein. Fortunately, she was successfully treated with surgery to remove the 6 by 4 inch mass. Tragically, as trichobezoars build up, they can cause 
ulcers, which can rupture, leading to infection, inflammation, even death. That's what happened to a 16-year-old girl in 2016 who sadly died after chewing and sucking on her hair for years. And then the self-vampirism, an even more extreme example of autophagia, which means drinking your own blood. Now, don't worry if you've ever sucked on a cut to quickly remove the blood. That's a fairly common reaction, and you won't be accepted into any of the self-vampirism communities for that one. People generally practice the act by removing blood using a needle and collecting it in a bag just like at a standard blood donation. However, others will cut themselves deliberately to suck and drain the blood. For example, the first red flag raised by child molester and suspected serial killer Nathaniel Bar Jonah was picking at scabs to create a festering wound and then sucking out the blood. He started at just six years old. Of course, not every person who takes part in self-vampirism is going to go down a dark path. There are plenty of examples of people who've done it out of curiosity or even for animal rights. One woman, Gwen van der Zwan, famously drained her blood and used it to create a batch of blood sausages which she dined on with her consenting friend. Mixed with lentils, tomato puree, soy sauce and herbs, the two concluded that the texture was good and the spice level was perfect, but she'd gone too heavy on the soy, so they were a bit salty. In another example, vegan Jamie Lee Date decided to use his blood to whip up a batch of meringues. His logic was that he wanted a taste of what had been missing, but he didn't want to compromise his vegan ethics, so the only source of ethical animal products available to him was himself. Unfortunately, his experiment was unsuccessful, and he described the resulting dessert like this. When I bit into one, I discovered that the taste was the same as the smell. Sickly gore, like eating an Oreo while being stabbed to death or drinking Sprite from a cup made of pennies. It was probably uh, one of the most traumatic culinary experiences I've ever had, but honestly, I found it less disgusting than eating something made of animal blood. There is the most distressing form of autophagia, known as self-cannibalism. It goes beyond eating our dried-up dead tissues like nails and hair and veneers, and goes into the consumption of our own living flesh. Sometimes this can be down to mental illness, like in the case of a 34-year-old male prisoner who was taken to hospital after guards found him with a 4 by 3 inch rectangle removed from his leg. He'd cut it out with a knife and then eaten it an hour later. Tragically, although he had a history of self-harm, the prisoner provided no psychiatric care. Unsurprisingly, it turned out that he had an undiagnosed psychiatric disorder and was transferred to a closed psychiatric ward for care. Another man, Kurt Kelly, used self-cannibalism to attempt to outsmart police officers. He was a drug and gun dealer from Florida whose weapons had been used in 15 murders, and he managed to evade capture for six months following a probation violation. So, when he was finally arrested, he did everything he could to convince them that they'd got the wrong guy. He lied about his name, tried to persuade them that he was his brother, and then, oh, when he heard them talking about getting out the portable fingerprint scanner, he chewed off his own fingertips. Of course, he was still identified and only succeeded in earning himself another charge, tampering with evidence. In other cases, like with the blood, people just get curious. As eating other people is usually a criminal offense, they decide to eat themselves instead. This was the case for one 38-year-old man whose foot was amputated after a motorcycle accident. He asked doctors to return it to him, took it home, and put it in his freezer while he decided what to do with it. Initially, he considered taxidermy or freeze-drying, but on hearing the price, he settled on taking a plaster cast of one part and eating the rest. Once this was decided, he later explains, My friends and I always had this joke. If you could try human flesh in an ethical and healthy way, would you? And we always said, of course. Well, the opportunity came up, and I called them on it. Fortunately, one friend's boyfriend was a chef, and three weeks later, he arrived to prepare the foot, marinating it overnight in spices and lime juice. The next day, the 11 friends sat down to brunch and enjoyed a main course of human foot tacos. I taste like buffalo, he later recalled, but chewier, super beefy, and a little fat. We weren't looking to go all Hannibal and get gourmet, just to make it so no one gagged. As they chowed down, the man joked, Well, today was the day I was inside ten of my friends at once. And apparently they all enjoyed the feast, except one who had to apologize for spitting him into a napkin. The next day, another rang to report, Hey, just so you know, I pooped you out. Sorry. So, what causes people to want to eat themselves? Well, rather than being a disease on its own, most scientists now believe that it's actually a symptom of several different conditions. For example, in a study that looked at people who suffered from the self-mutilative form of autophagia, 52% said they did it to stop bad thoughts, and 34% said they did it to stop themselves from doing something else that they didn't want to do. This is why there's such a strong link between the condition and psychological disorders like schizophrenia and OCD. Unsurprisingly, people with impulse control disorders, ICDs, are also likely to experience autophagia. Some simply can't resist the urge to bite or chew on themselves even though it's harmful. Others experience arousal or tension before committing autophagia and then extreme pleasure or gratification during the act. 
Other conditions that can trigger the disorder are anxiety, stress, depression. Obviously, it's fairly common to see someone bite their nails when under pressure, but some individuals take it to the extreme. For example, in 2008, a 28-year-old man from New Zealand, referred to as Mr. X, experienced a personal crisis that led to depression, insomnia, and intrusive thoughts about cutting his fingers off. A year later, he gave in, tied a shoelace around his little finger as a tourniquet, and sliced it off with a jigsaw. He then fried it with vegetables and ate it. Mr. X is now infamous as the only known case of self-cannibalism to occur in New Zealand. Treating autophagia depends on the causes. Gloves, bitter nail varnish, and chewable plastic rings can be useful in mild cases, but where the damage is extreme or self-mutilative, antidepressants, antipsychotics, cognitive behavioral therapy, and or habit reversal training are usually needed. However, some people don't seek help and wish to continue their autophagia habits undisturbed, and huge online communities have sprung up around the practice. After all, eating yourself is less likely to land you in prison or with HIV, hepatitis, or E. coli than eating a stranger. One Latvian artist, Arthur Berginge, even used the act to create a neo-conceptual performance where two people had their flesh sliced off, fried in a pan, and fed to them. Unsurprisingly, the piece was met with criticism and cries of promoting illegal cannibalism. Berginge brushed off the accusations. After all, the participants were only eating themselves, which isn't illegal. He stated, maybe fingernail gnawing or snot devouring can also be considered a crime. 